Hi everyone, Jennifer Blevins Smith with Integral Clinic Solutions, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Navigating the Business of Medicine. Today we're going to do a very high level overview about revenue cycle management. I'm just doing a really high level overview kind of summary because it's piggybacking off of my previous video that I did just about revenue cycle in a practice. And now I want to talk about managing that revenue cycle. We could be here for days, weeks even, talking about revenue cycle management, what goes into it, what needs to be done, how it gets done, etc. But we don't got time for that right now, okay? So I just want to explain managing the revenue cycle in a practice. And of course, this is more going to be aimed at smaller private practices because this tends to be the area where people wear many hats and you have a limited pool of people who are qualified and understand this to hire from often. And sometimes that's where things can kind of go south. So a lot of people underestimate how important the revenue cycle is in a practice and managing it closely as well. A lot of people think that they put certain practices into place or they run certain reports or they're watching certain numbers and that's all they have to do. And unfortunately, no matter the size of the practice, that actually isn't good enough if you want to be successful on the business side as well as providing optimum patient care. The first part of managing the revenue cycle is ensuring that everybody that's involved in the revenue cycle process is aware of their role and why it's important in this entirety. So not just letting them see their narrow area of, oh, I just register patients, oh, I just schedule patients, I just collect money. No, it's wow, I actually have to make sure I register patients accurately because that's going to be the information sent to the insurance. And if it's not correct, then it could get rejected or denied. And then we have to go back and try to fix it and it's delaying the process and for money to come in the door. It's not just the providers picking whatever level of service they want or your mid office staff forgetting to choose point of care tests on their fee ticket and capturing that. It's, oh my gosh, we could be leaving money on the table because I forgot to bill for that and that could be really bad because you do so many of those and that's hundreds of dollars. Or the provider getting audited because they're billing way too many level fours and fives and it's slowing down money from coming back in the practice Practice, or they're downcoding it, the insurances, because there's not medical necessity supported in those medical records and the provider doesn't understand how to appropriately choose which level they need to be billing. It's also making sure the coders and billers understand that they need to be watching things and getting things out the door quickly, correcting things and returning it quickly, educating the managers or whoever is overseeing this management of the revenue cycle, saying, this is what I'm seeing, these are the causes, we need to fix these upstream so that they get prevented in the future from happening. It all comes back around. It literally is a circle. And one thing affects another, which affects another, and ultimately it affects the revenue and the financial health of the practice. Somebody needs to make sure that everyone understands their role. Somebody needs to make sure they're monitoring these staff to make sure they're doing their jobs as expected and quickly. So having those KPIs or key performance indicators and expectations for the staff and making sure it's getting done. Somebody who's a strong communicator that can say, hey, we're noticing that you keep choosing this insurance plan and you actually need to be registering patients with this insurance plan in our system when you see this card or you hear this plan name and explaining to them why. And putting the why behind stuff is huge if you're managing especially the revenue cycle. Having staff maybe sit with another staff member in a different role to understand how what they do affects them downstream is always a good idea as well. 
I used to have my front desk sit with me and watch me go through the claims that got rejected or denied because of demographic reasons or insurance related reasons that was caused by their air up front. And they realized, wow, I'm making a lot of mistakes. I didn't realize Jennifer was having to take that time out of her day to fix that stuff that I could have done correctly in the beginning. And guess what? They started doing it better. And it wasn't because I got upset with them. It wasn't because I reprimanded them. I just helped them see it from a different angle and they respected it. Not only do you have to watch the staff and how everything moves through when it comes to the revenue cycle, but you need to run regular reports, reports on regular cadences to indicate your key performance indicators. You should have a good idea of how many visits you see in a day, a week, a month, a year. How much revenue is coming in in that same amount of time. What, how many denials and rejections are you getting on a daily, weekly basis and what's causing that? Are you checking your outstanding AR and where all the money is that hasn't been paid yet? Is it at insurance companies? Is it with patients? If it's with insurance companies, is it because nobody's following up on those from your side to say, hey, we sent this claim 45, 50 days ago, why hasn't it been processed? Or, oh my gosh, we have a lot of claims sitting at a specific insurance company. What's going on? We better get on the horn. Maybe it's a credentialing issue, but you wouldn't know unless you're running the right aging reports. If you have a lot outstanding at the patient side of stuff and the patient cost shares. Why is that? Is your front desk not asking to collect on those balances when patients are checking in a perfect prime opportunity to be capturing that revenue? Are statements not going out as regularly as they should? Are patients just not willing to be flexible and you need a better collections process because you've been a little too willy nilly and now you need to have more structure so patients know it's serious? There's so many things that go into managing the revenue cycle, but unless you're running the right reports and you know what to be looking for and you know what needs to be done and you have certain benchmarks that you know you need to hit, running those reports and falling short, you need to go, oh my gosh, okay, what's going on? And you need to dig deeper. Managing the revenue cycle is something that needs to be done, in my opinion, on a daily basis. And it's not everything at once. You have certain things you run on regular cadences, like I said. So you might be looking at collections from a patient side every day to see what the front desk is doing. And maybe you run a report to see how often statements are going out once a month. Maybe you're checking your outstanding AR twice a month to see what's in insurance and what's out with patients. You need to set this up for yourself, and I could go on forever about KPIs, but as you practice, you should have certain benchmarks, certain amounts, certain numbers that you are trying to achieve at different categories and to give you an idea if you're being successful. Your financial health is all reliant upon the revenue cycle and making it as efficient as possible. Staying up with the changes, understanding your area's insurance policies, the number of patients on certain insurances, whether it's commercial, Medicare, Medicaid, all of that goes into revenue cycle management. It's important that somebody who understands that and is very analytical and has a successful history of doing that for practices is responsible for it at your practice. So if you're a provider that's opening a practice, you should put in the money to hire someone who is well-educated and versed in the revenue cycle management who you can rely on. Now that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be checking up on these people, whoever you put in charge or person, because everyone needs to have checks and balances. So the owner should be doing some checks and balances on the manager to make sure the manager's doing the expected checks and balances on the staff and the entire revenue cycle. It all kind of goes together, but everyone needs to be held accountable. And that's where I personally see a lot of things go south, not only with the revenue cycle not being streamlined and efficient internally, but also because nobody's making sure that the person who is supposed to be overseeing the process and fixing things as identified issues downstream or the changes that need to be made, they're not making sure that person's doing their job, they're taking for granted they are, and then things just start to slide that way. Revenue cycle management starts at the top 
it goes down, but everybody needs to be held accountable. If you have any questions or comments about this, I would love to hear from you. So please leave that in the comments below. Smash the thumbs up button if today's video was helpful and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Lastly, please share this video with any of your colleagues whom you feel would benefit from the information. Thank you again. Thank you for the support. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.